Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to our Bible study this morning. I just love this song that's playing right now. Let me pause it for a It's time to begin. It's time to start. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. I love that song. Um, and it is now time to start. So we're beginning our, our Bible study here for today on the topic of Jesus as the Master Teacher. And so today is October 31st. 2020 and we have a just a wonderful treat for you so i'd like to welcome you and invite you to share share on facebook start a watch party or just share the link on youtube uh, with your friends and let them know that this is going to be a great time and whether you are listening to this watching this live or afterwards you're in for a treat and a real and a real blessing so uh, we are following the sabbath school bible study and if you would like to have just a great tool to read each day, just for a few minutes, you read from the Bible and a short commentary on the topic for the day, go to this website, sabbathschoolpersonalministries.org. There's an app also you can download, and we have studies there for every age group. And here in this panel, in this uh, setting, we discuss the adult uh, topic, which for this week is Jesus as the Master Teacher. And by the way, if you are following along with those readings and you would like to be a part of this panel sometime and, uh, and be with us here, let us know. Send us an email. You can uh, just communicate with us easily that way. Communications at cbooksda.org and let us know that you would like to be with us here one day. We like to start each week just by sharing what we're grateful for. And so this morning, well, I am grateful for my family. I'm grateful for uh, the blessing to be with you here right now. I'm just thankful. And I'm thankful for the panel that we, ha that we have with us here today. And I'd like to introduce to you my dear friend, Tanisha. Welcome, Tanisha. So glad to have you. Good morning. Good morning. And what's your biggest gratitude today, my sister? Well, I am super grateful for, you know, every season in our lives and the different things we get to learn from them that allow us to grow even closer to our Heavenly Father. Mm, all right. Good to have you, sister. And then we have also with us here my good friend, Dwight Palmer. Welcome, Dwight. Good to have you. What are you grateful for today? Happy Sabbath, each and every one. I am grateful today that I am following the path of staying focused on Christ. And I'm just happy I'm alive and well today to be able to share your words and display his characteristics and prepare for heaven. Mm. Well, glad you're here, my friend. And then we also have with us here, my dear friend, Avanel McKenzie. And Avanel, good morning to you. Good morning, uh, Pastor Munoz, and good morning, everyone. Very good. What are you grateful for today, Avanel? I am truly grateful for my friends and family and loved ones being kept through all the difficulties of COVID, shutdown, scarcity of foods and other things. I'm grateful that God has blessed us with health and strength to pursue Him through these times. Mm, they're so well said. Thank you so much, Avanel. And I see some of you are sending your gratitudes. And so uh, I have one here that I see. Christopher Cargill wrote, I'm grateful to the Lord for all he has done for me. And we are grateful for the things he's done for you, Clifton. Hey, Clifton, I want to have you on this panel one week soon, okay? Uh, please uh, let me know if you if you want to be on sometime. Um very good. So good morning and happy Sabbath to you too, Shirley. And everybody else, thank you so much for your greetings and thank you for being engaged. Continue to do so uh, here as we, as we go along our study today. So uh, let's begin uh, here with a prayer from Brother Dwight. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, dear God, we thank you for another Sabbath. We thank you for another day, dear God, that as we prepare to learn more about your word. May you bless each and every person on this panel and equip our minds with your word, dear God, so we can be able to spread it to others, so we can all have a better understanding of Jesus' love for us. 
Bless each and every one who is listening online from home or wherever you are. God bless you and be with you. Happy Sabbath. Amen. Thank you, Dwight. Thank you for sharing uh, that beautiful prayer. And now, friends, we're talking about Jesus as the best teacher ever. So Jesus teaches us um, how God is. And Jesus said in John 14, and verse 9, He who has seen me has seen the Father. He set an example of how we should live, for I have given you an example, Jesus said, that you should do or live as I have done to you. Just That's in John 13 and verse 15. Jesus paid the price for our sins and reconciled us to God. God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. So you want to stay with us and uh, so that you can uh, contribute and share in the chat or just listen to what it means that Jesus reconciles us back to God and back to Himself. How did He do that? It says, not imputing their trespasses. That is, not counting their sins, their mistakes to them. And He has then given us or committed to us the word of reconciliation. That's the scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19. So, the first thing we're going to look at here today is that Jesus is the glory of the Father. Jesus is the glory of the Father. And so, uh, we begin here with this scripture from John 14 and verse 9. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? This is the conversation between Jesus and his disciple Philip. And then Jesus says, He who has seen me has seen the Father. Uh, so that is the job of Jesus, the best teacher ever, to reveal to us the Father. And if we go to Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, we see how the author of Hebrews explains that God could not meet humans face to face after sin entered into the world. And there's a whole reason for that. And that is why he revealed God's will to us through prophets, people to whom he spoke directly. So the revelation was imperfect because this was God speaking to Moses, to Isaiah, uh, to Jonah, remember, uh, to Hosea. People in very complicated and uh, not ideal situations. So it was only Jesus who could perfectly reveal who God is. Have you ever read the Bible, particularly some of the stories in the uh, and the Old Testament, like in the Torah, and you're like, wow, that is, and you're like, you have questions like, really, did that really happen? Was that God's will? And then what brings clarity is looking at Jesus and his life. For in Jesus, everything becomes much clearer. That's why he's the teacher, the master teacher. So Jesus uh, is the brightness of God's glory. He expresses the express image of the person of God. And Jesus, the Bible says, upholds, holds all things together. He has purged or cleansed our sins. And Jesus sits down at the right hand of God, for Jesus is God. So Jesus came to teach the truth about God and show us the glory of God, uh, as he says in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, in the face of Jesus Christ. Those who saw Jesus, he wasn't just a regular human being but he was also God. So, with that, let's look at this scripture and see what you think. Um, so, it says, For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So, a couple of words that stand out here is the Jesus as in creation, he is making light to shine out of darkness. So with that, I have a question for you, my friend. Do you have an out-of-darkness story? Do you? What is your out-of-darkness story? From what darkness did God bring you out? And while you're thinking about your story, and you're going to type it in the chat, we're going to hear here today, uh, from my dear friend, Tanisha. Tanisha, could you share your story with us? Yes. And I tell you, 
in the beginning of things, right? Things will always be rough, but at the end, the end is the beautiful part. And I'm still living my end. My darkest story came at, I had gotten ties in June. In July, we had celebrated five things. The purchase of our new home, the graduations we've had, um, the uh, anniversary, and the birth, the soon coming birth of my son. Oh my goodness, everything was beautiful, right? And I had just gotten baptized. And guess what happened in us? My whole world came crashing down. It was the two earth of my son. He came five months early. It... You you never know like what strength is within you, and, and that strength could not have been there if I had not first have known that there is a e eternal home, and your faith actually prepares you. So it was was a bling that I had done the Bible study, the walk that it took to get baptized in June. So that August came and something you never know that you can survive something like that. Like your son being born, he's so little in your hands and he he didn't even stay with you. And wow. the light sh shone through my, my Seabrook family. So Tanisha, um, you're, you're sharing that your, your darkness story was when uh, you had your baby prematurely and your baby didn't make it. Yes. Yes. And so Okay, thank you. So for some, for that person watching right now who may be going through a similar darkness, um, what what would, would you say is that was the number one thing that was key in in letting the light of God shine in the time of such loss and pain? It actually it was a story from um, Sister Laverne who shared that you know a similar thing had happened to someone she knew and the 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 glory that came later that yes the lord was still able to give her her gift right her gift of her child and that, that i should starting myself back in the word and she said read a psalm a day and 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 her give me that light I was able to shine that light and share it with others. So, you know, I've heard that, hey, hey, your story actually helps someone come out of the prison that they're in. So don't be afraid to share your story because your story is what is going to help them. So that was a light. Mm. Thank you for sharing that, Tanisha, so, so much. Out of that uh, the great, great pain, how God brought you through. Thank you so much. So I love that suggestion, Tanisha. Read a psalm. Read a psalm each day. Let the light of the Master Teacher Jesus into your life through the Word of God. Thank you for sharing that. Um, very good. There's so much more that could be said um, on that. Uh, we, we have more stories coming. So uh, Jesus said to him, this is in John 14 and uh, verse 9. I have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? I'm, if you see me, you've seen the Father, Jesus said. Jesus revealed the glory and the character of the Father. People could see God in, in Jesus. Jesus is the image of God, says Hebrews 1 verse 3. And we are transformed to the image of Jesus. Romans 8.29 says that, 
we can reveal the glory and the character of the Father to this world, similarly as Jesus did. So Jesus is the light of the world, John 8, verse 12, and we've been made light. Jesus, the master teacher, said that in Matthew 5, verse 14, to light the world with the knowledge of the character of God. So, uh, the more time we spend with Jesus, like Tanisha was saying now, spending time each day, read a psalm a day, let the light shine through. The, the, so, the more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will reflect His glory. So, with that, let me show you this scripture from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 uh, and verse 18. And let's see. Um, let me see. Avanel, would you, would you read this one for us right there? But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Mm, thank you so much. And so, friends, we just we were talking about Jesus, the Master Teacher, who uh, brings us out of darkness. In other words, transformation, like this verse puts it. Um, it takes place in our lives. So, uh, Avanel, since you're here, why don't you share uh, how you're being transformed? And friends, you can share in the chat too, and I'm going to get to the chat in just a minute. Uh, but let's hear from Avanel. How are you being transformed? How am I being transformed? My transformation is not really a miraculous thing that happened to me once and for all. I feel like Jacob, I am wrestling with the Lord and he is wrestling back with me. My transformation is like an onion, the skin being peeled back one piece at a time. And the Lord is very patient with me that when he peels something back and it's painful to me, he is right there with me. And I'm glad that my transformation is not miraculous and sudden and life-blowing. I'm glad that it is slow and sometimes painful because I can recognize when the Lord has done something in my life and I look back and say, wow, I've actually come from that place to where I am now and I can glorify Him every day for that one thing that He has done, happened, managed to complete in my life to make me more like Him. Thank you. And thank you, Avanel. Thank you for sharing. So what about you, my friend? What is your story of being transformed? You can share it in the chat and uh, and we'd love to put it on the screen uh, if, if, we, if we get a chance. But if, if you share it in the chat, and even if we don't share it on the screen here, everybody who's watching can read and benefit from your sharing. So thank you for that. All right, uh, so uh, next, I want to show you this powerful, powerful uh, passage here. Uh, it says, Jesus, the master teacher, came to reveal the character of the deity to mankind. Deity means God. What is that character? Tender, compassionate, sympathetic, ever considerate of others. That's in a great book called The Ministry of Healing. And so, uh, as the master teacher, not only is, uh, is Jesus, as we have said so far here, the glory of the Father, um, but Jesus is our example. So, let's take a look at that, uh, at Jesus being our example. Uh, in John 13, 15, it says, For I have given you an example that you should do, that you should live, that you should be, uh, that you should do as I have done to you. That was in the context of service, after having washed the feet of the disciples, something that shocked them tremendously, because how could Jesus, the master teacher, be washing the feet of the students? Uh, which uh, was something that was done then by, actually by servants, or even slaves, uh, were the people who did that job. And Jesus said, I have come to be your servant. I have come to be your slave. I have come to be here for you. Uh, it was very shocking, very shocking. Now, in order to follow Jesus' example, we get to learn about how he lived when he was on earth. And Paul, the apostle, masterfully described the character of Jesus 
and what we and how we get to imitate him. This is a very deep passage in Philippians 2 verses 3 to 11. Uh, but just to summarize it, uh, it's humility, obedience, and service. And we could reference so many other passages uh, on this. But here's the point. God's great work of education and salvation is accomplished by humbling ourselves before God, obeying Him, and becoming servants of others. So, uh, I wish we had time here to, to go into Philippians chapter 2, verses 2, uh, rather 3 to 11. Um, but we're, or for example, Matthew 11, verse 29, where Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. For I am meek, and, uh, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. So we're going to consider these three qualities of, uh, of Jesus, humility, obedience, and service. And I have a question for you, because I know that for me, those qualities don't come easy. So let me ask you this. Which of these three qualities of, of Jesus, the master teacher, humility, obedience, and service, has been more difficult for you to emulate, and why? Would you share with us in the chat? Please do. And while you're doing that, I'm going to bring my friend, uh, Tanisha, again to share on that. So, Tanisha, go right ahead. Awesome. So, for me, you know, there's never just one thing, right? So, for, for me, it's service. But it's the, the obedience in doing the service, right? So it's never one thing. Um, for each time I've been called, and that's the th thing, have you been called, right? You, you, you want to have that desire, that passion um, to help and serve. So when I've been called to do, do um, growth group, right? And they say, oh, yeah, you, could, you can do it. And you're like, really? But I tell you, in the audience, in the walking, in the preparing, in the, the the community, in the fellowshipping of doing your group or, you know, the, the different ministries I've been in at church, I'm telling you, there are parts of you that are growing as a, as a Christian, as a child of God, as a, a, a citizen, right? Uh, of his his kingdom and it is everything is working for your good so you know my battle has always been with the service so now when i am called i say okay lord you know what am i gonna learn this time <laughs> that's that's great that's great tanisha thank you so and 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 you're surprised each time that you you accept the service opportunity and in the end it turns out that it wasn't so much you were helping others, but the help that you get for yourself in the process. Yeah, thank you so much for that. You know what? Um, I see a, a lot of comments here. I see one here that says, transformation is a moment by moment surrendering. And you know, hey, Dwight, I skipped you because you wanted to share uh, about how you're being transformed. And I skipped you there by accident, my friend. So uh, share with us, uh, Dwight. The obedience. I'll, I'll, I'll share on the, 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 the fact of obedience. Um, good morning, everyone. If I should categorize those three words, I would start out with obedience brings humility to deliver God's services. Why I say that? Because um, without being obedient to Christ, you won't be able to deliver that good characteristic which brings me to um matthew 16 verse 24 and um it says then said jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me a lot of times we get caught up by self and because we get caught up by self we fail to do God's work, but God has never caught up with self. But in any circumstances, he loves us as his sons and daughters. So for me to be obedient, 
I have to equip myself with the word daily and be able to show those characteristics in Christ. For example, let me be short. I will be at work. I work in the healthcare facility where I um, assist the um, intellectual challenges. And sometimes I'll be in the public. And the way I show empathy, you know, and to, to the person that I'm serving, someone will be just passing by. I don't know that person from nowhere. And that person will stop and say, hey, God bless you guys, man, because I've been watching you quite some morning. And it's only God in you to do what you have been doing. So continue to do that. What that does, it makes me feel joyful. It makes me feel like, wow, I could just run and jump for joy and shout out Jesus because I did not know by just doing these simple things, I'm displaying Christ's characteristics. And this is what Christ wants us to do each day on this earth, in this life, as we prepare to meet him on his second coming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dwight. Thank you for sharing. And Jesus, the master teacher, uh, is introducing the Bible as the one who's reconciling us back to God. That's what this scripture is about right here. God was in Christ, reconciling, bringing back together the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them. That is, not counting, recording, or holding against them their trespasses or their mistakes, their sins, uh, the self-harm and harming of others, uh, and has committed or given to us the word or the ministry of reconciliation. So the thing that God has done for us, now we get to do for others is basically what the apostle is saying here in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 19. So God took the first step. Here's the point from the master teacher. The teacher takes the first step. The teacher leads by example. He gave his son to reconcile us with him. He also puts the desire in our hearts to repent. Have you looked at Romans chapter 2, verse 4, where it says, For uh, it is the mercies and the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. When we see, wow, what a wonderful God. How can I let this amazing God down? No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to honor God, for God is so good to me. Jesus is the creator and sustainer of life, the Bible says. And Jesus redeemed us saved us at the cross. He forgives us of our sins and reconciles us with God. He also makes us a part of His uh, redeeming work in our social spheres. We get to help. We get to cooperate in bringing more people. So sin created a breach between God and humankind, naturally. Why? Why is that? What is sin? Um, a simple way to look at sin is Anything that brings harm to self, to others, or to God's creation. That's sin. So it's not a mean God that's trying to take the fun out of life, but it's a God that protects. And that says, that's not good for you. Don't put your hand in the stove burner because it will hurt you. That's, that's, that's the teacher who's saying, I am for you. I'm not against you. I am on your side. So, um, the point is, just like the child that insists on doing something that is self-harming, so we cannot, on our own, breach this gap, learn this obedience. Uh, what is more, the sin in us prevents us from truly desiring to close that gap. So it's the, it's the nature. If, you are, if you're a parent, you, you recall, you, some of you may be going through this, where uh, your child is insisting on a path that you know for sure is going to bring harm, and, but it seems that they have no ability. They are powerless over their impulse to do the very thing that will hurt them. And so that's our situation. So uh, in that case then, let me ask you this. Do you have a story of a time when you did not want 
to be reconciled to God. And yet God brought you closer to himself, closer to heaven anyway. Please share in the chat, share your story. Uh, people would love to read it. I'd love to read it. Um, and uh, my sister, Avanel, you have a story like that. I believe you want to share with us. Yes, uh, you mentioned, Pastor Jimmy, that sometimes like children, we do not wish to obey the Lord. We just wish to do our own thing. And there was an event in my life that I really did not want to hear the Lord tell me, Avanel, please don't do that. I wanted to do my own thing, and I did. See, I didn't want the Lord to tell me, don't do that, because I wanted to enjoy this, and I wanted him to bless it. I just didn't want him to say no. So I did, and I enjoyed it for a short while. And invariably, my life didn't crumble. It didn't fall apart. It fell like a crystal glass down on a ceramic floor and broke into a million pieces that I couldn't even stick back together. So here am I, seated with my mom and my three kids and myself, with my life in shambles, total shambles, nothing to be stuck back together. And I called on the name of the Lord. And guess what? He was there. I held on to the Lord's skirt tails for the ride back up into having a life that he gave me. It was a dizzying ride because there were things that I had no right doing that I had to correct. It took time, but God brought me back to himself. One day, one hour, one second, one action, one act of obedience, one act of prayer, he brought me back to himself. Sometimes, you know, I don't let go completely. I let one hand go to see how this thing is going. And I'm like, uh-uh, let me keep holding on to the Heavenly Father because that's the best thing there is. Thank you. Thank you, Avanel. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Wow. I think a lot of us can relate to what you're saying. Uh, a lot of us can relate. God, just just let me have this. Let me have this. Um, and uh, and if we insist, we, 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 we will do that very thing and learn for ourselves that God wasn't really trying to hold anything back from us that was good for us. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. All right. Uh, so I'm seeing some comments here that uh, are coming in, um, and quite a few, quite a few. So let's let's get to a few here on on this topic. Um, Dana Salmon said, "I have been transformed from an upbringing um, from an upbringing of addiction to this journey of freedom in Jesus Christ." Thank you for sharing, my friend. And we say amen and amen. Praise God for that. Okay, all right, let's uh, look at another comment here. Clifton wrote, uh, when I was married, I could not tell, uh, you could not tell me uh, nothing about God because everything was going right until the day when the only person I could call was almost God. So it's the story there of uh of uh, God being with you in a very difficult situation. All right. So uh, let's grab this comment here that just came in. Humility from uh, Gillian. Thank you, Gillian. Humility has been very difficult and tricky. I have learned that true humility comes with life struggles and experiences. I experience humility when I accept life for what it is, empowering humility. Living in reality sounds like. Thank you so much, my sister, for sharing. All right, let me give you as we as we um, are heading towards towards the end. Let me give you a heads up for our next question, uh, which we want you to share about. And that is this. I know a lot of you will be very excited. Uh, and when you share this, think of the person. When you share your answer to why do I worship Jesus? I want you to think of that person who may be watching right now or listening who is brand new. They just picked up a Bible and they just started listening to messages like or teachings like the ones we're doing here today and uh, they would benefit from hearing why. Why do you 
Why do you worship Jesus? We're saying here Jesus is the master teacher. Uh, but we're saying he's more than a teacher. Jesus is God. So why do you worship Jesus? Share in the chat so that we can share on that. Um, so with that, let me put a scripture here from one of the first people who had the privilege of worshiping uh, God in the person of Jesus. Um, and he wrote in Revelation 5 and verse 12, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. This is in the book of Revelation after the, only the Lamb could open the seals of the scroll. And there was no one else found, not in heaven, not in earth, who could open the scroll. And then the worship from the gathered people was this, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. And of course, the Lamb here refers to Jesus. Uh, as it says in the Gospel according to John chapter 1, verse 29, Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. So humanity has been encouraged to worship Jesus since uh, he, God, became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. A group of angels in the shape of a bright star came to announce the coming of the Savior, Messiah, King of Kings. And in just a couple of months, we're going to be singing about, about that uh, in our Christmas, Christmas songs uh, that I love so much. Looking forward to that. That announcement was heard at the hills of Bethlehem. And it was, uh, of course, and it was seen from Mesopotamia, modern-day Iran. If you're familiar with geography, that's, that's quite a distance from Bethlehem, from Israel, all the way to the east, to modern-day Iran or Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers. The shepherds ran to the manger soon as, uh, as soon as they heard the news. They understood that the newborn was the Savior. So they worshipped Him and shared the news. That's recorded in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. The wise ones from the East understood that the angel star was a fulfillment of the prophecies that foretold the coming of the Savior. They got ready to meet Him, then traveled to the manger to worship Him, to give the presents, as you may remember. Like them, we are also called to worship Christ in this scripture that you have on the screen right now, Revelation 5, verse 12, and others. So, with that, we want to speak especially to our friends, uh, to you. You may be new to this, and Dwight, Dwight wants to share with you why he worships Jesus. And we'll get more comments from others, uh, but let's hear from Dwight now on this one. Okay, for those who are new to this way of serving Christ, I want to directly say to you that God promises never fails. He said in one of his promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He also said that he will never give you more than what you can bear. And each and every one of us have a gift that the Lord have given unto us. It's for us to find that gift in ourselves. But in order to find that gift in ourselves, we need to have faith. And that faith that I'm talking is an individual expression of your love for Christ, recognizing his love for you. So whatever circumstances you're going through today, when all will fail, when mother and father will forsake you, the Lord will never forsake you. And when you think it's the last, it's just the beginning, sometimes Christ allowed things to happen to us, to strengthen us. He also said in his word that read and find yourself approved. So no matter what, I want to say to Anyone out there today, especially, that is coming into the word, stick to the word. Let it be a leading example to your life each and every day. And in each and everything you do, even when you see your family excelling, 
say thank you lord even when you get food on your table thank you lord because without christ we are empty vessels god bless you mm. thank you thank you so much for sharing uh dwight and we have some more sharing here uh uh, from from different ones answering this question why do i worship jesus and uh, rick warwick adds jesus has brought me through the loss of three children and now uh, thank you for sharing brother rick and uh here brother dana responds to that brother rick thanks for sharing that may god's peace continue to strengthen you and of course, that's exactly what you're saying. Why do you worship Jesus? Joyce Hammond says, Jesus is the only Son of God. He gave us His precious blood for sinners. Jesus loves you more than anyone because He has gone to prepare a place for you so that you can spend eternity with Him. <laughs> and I wish I could do justice to how Joyce would say this with so much passion. Praise God for that. And uh, that's right. Uh, uh, Barbara wrote, He is the only person who saves and loves you in this life and the next. Amen. And uh, I worship Jesus so that my life is not in vain. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. This is great. Oh, wow. So, uh, that brings us to the end of our time together here. Uh, but we have just a couple more things to share with you. But first, I do have an important thing I want to say today. Being Halloween, I want to share a resource for parents and for anyone who may want a resource on how do you think biblically and, um, and uh, from a Christ Christian perspective on that topic. I'll share a resource, uh, so just stick around. And let's have... Um, Let's have a closing prayer here, and uh, let's see, Avanel, would you have our closing prayer for us now? Yes, thank you, Pastor Jimmy. Um, I would like our prayer to be taken from Philippians 1, verses 9 through 11. And this is my prayer for all of us. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge, and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Amen. And amen, Avanel. Thank you so much. Uh, praise God. I love that. Love the biblical praying the prayers from the Bible is powerful. Okay, so if you are a parent, maybe you're thinking, you're, you may be wondering, okay, what about, what about, uh, how, what, what do I do with Halloween? If you have young children and they have all kinds of pressures from school. So um, this website that I'm uh, putting here has a great article from the Adventist Review. Let me put it also in the chat so everybody can uh, can uh, have access to it. And you can go and read and uh, share it with um, with your children as appropriate. It just gives some facts, some helpful things uh, to think about on uh, on this uh, on this date. Okay, my friends. So thank you for joining us today. We're just delighted that you were with us. We'll be here again next week, same time, same place. Uh, we um, Today we have a wonderful service. You don't want to miss it. Pastor Roberts is preaching today. So you want to, you, you want to stay tuned in about 10 to 15 minutes. Make sure to refresh your browser if you're watching on YouTube particularly. And uh, so you don't miss uh, the next. And make sure to subscribe. That's the one way to make sure you don't miss any of our life-giving and faith-boosting services. Okay. And one final thing, my friends. Uh, Today is the final day for anyone who wishes to join one of our online growth groups. So uh, if you'd like to join today, there's no more chance against uh, after today for this fall semester. So they're free. They're welcome. Anyone is welcome to participate. Uh, CBOOKSDA.org is the place to go to, uh, to see that. Okay, um, time has uh, passed. So with that, I'll say God bless you, and I'll see you again next week. Take care. And